Hello, my name is Tom Wright. As a game artist, I often jump between applications like Blender and Unreal Engine. And it's really important to keep my visuals and the viewports consistent. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Blender and Cycles to closely match Unreal Engine's viewport using some assets from the Unreal Engine. This image is an example of something that I built completely in Blender using Blender's material editor and exported it out into Unreal Engine and rendered it there. So we're going to do something similar with a more simple object. So let's get started. So let's start a new project in Unreal Engine. The main thing we want to do is grab the starter content. In fact, if you already have a project with starter content, then you can just skip this part and go straight to your project. And I'll show you where to get the meshes that we're going to need. So it doesn't really matter what we name it. So I'll just create this new project. Okay, so here we have a base empty project from Unreal Engine. I'm going to jump into the starter content folder and we're going to go into maps. And in there we have one called advanced lighting. I'm going to double click that to open that map. So I let the shaders compile real quick. And what we have is just a couple of meshes with some materials on them. I'm going to export these guys out real quick. So I'm going to select the base first. In order to get to the base in my content browser, I'm going to click this magnifying glass. To click that guy, it gives it to me selected. So I'm going to right click it, go to Asset Actions, and hit Export. It's going to export it to the base of this content folder. I'm just going to go back one, maybe make my own little folder. Doesn't matter what we call it, we call it Work Files. In there, I'm going to save. We don't need the level of details, the LODs or a collision. It's just extra mesh we don't need right now. And hit export. The next thing I'm going to want is this mesh, which I'm also going to hit the magnifying glass. Right click. In asset actions, I'm going to hit export. It's going to give me another FBX. I'm going to save that down with the same settings. Now I want some of these materials. Really, we're just looking for this image texture. And if we double click that mesh, we see this material, we can double click it. And we can find that texture right here. So if I click here, over here we get the magnifying glass. If I click there, minimize out of this, we'll have that exact texture selected. So I'm going to right click, Asset Actions, Hit export. Usually gives me a TGA. This one's going to be an HDR. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to hit save. So we're all done in Unreal, except for the fact that we're going to reference Unreal a few times because we're going to look at the materials in Unreal Engine and match the settings to Blender. So let's jump over to Blender real quick. Don't need these objects, so I'm going to select them and delete them. The next thing we want to do is to import the FBXs we saved out of Unreal Engine. So we'll go to Import, FBX. They ended up in Documents. My project, there's our work files that we created. We'll grab one at a time. We'll do the platform first. Just double click it. And then import the next FBX. Double click it. Now these guys are a little bit small because we never set Blender up to be an Unreal Engine scale. So what we'll notice is in Unreal Engine, these guys actually have a scale on them. The platform being 10 times and this being five times. So let's do that here in Blender. The end key will now scale this guy. 10 times will be 0.1 rather than 0 0.01. So we'll do that all the way around. We'll dive down in here, select this guy. He's going to be 5 times, so 0 0.05 should work fine. 
and then 0 0.05. We want to set him on the base of this. So I'm going to hold down control, kind of pull him up until his bottom meets the top of the platform. All right, so the first thing we'll do is set up the environment to look like the Unreal environment. And that's something we missed over in Unreal. So let's go back. We want this HDR image in the background. So if I select it, you'll see it here, the cube map. Again, I can click the magnifying glass. It'll take me right to that asset. Right click it, asset action, export. Save that down. Jump back into Blender. Let's make sure we're in the Cycles Renderer, the World Setting, Use Nodes. I'm going to make another window that is our Node Editor. Select the World. This is the gray that we're seeing here. So we just want to add an environment texture. Shift A, texture, environment texture. We'll go ahead and connect those and hit open. These work files are going to be in your recent block here. So just select your work files, select that HDR and hit open image. Now, if we go into the rendered mode, we should see that same high dynamic range image in the background. Now let's set up our first material. We'll do the base object. We go back over to Unreal. So if you see over here, you select the base, you'll see the material. Double click that you'll get the material settings. You notice that this material input looks pretty familiar, right? Well, Blender has a principled shader that actually matches this very closely. So if we look at the numbers that are being plugged in to the base color, the metal, and the roughness, we should be able to match this. So let's pop back over into Blender. Selecting the base, making sure we're on the object node editor. I'm going to have to roll over to this material and hit use nodes. We have this because we started out in the Blender renderer and it thought we were going to use some Blender materials. But we're going to use cycles. So if you click that, and we're going to swap out this diffuse shader for a principled shader. So the easiest way to do that is to select it over here in the properties panel and replace it. Principled shader. So if you look at that principled shader in its input settings, it's a lot like the Unreal shader. So this should be really close. So if we come over here and Shift A, Shift A input RGB, and even though it was a constant number or a float point number in Unreal, we really what you're really seeing is red, green, and blue channels all set to the same. So if we select the color and set all three channels to 0.3, which is what it was in Unreal, then we should get the exact same gray color. Plug this guy in. Throw this into material mode. If we look over here, see the 0.3, that's the same gray that we're seeing right here. So we know there was zero metallic and then we know the roughness was also 0.3. We can enter that directly. So if we go back into the rendered mode, take a look at it, it's pretty close to the base. Of course we don't have the sunlight that Unreal has and we'll fix that in just a moment. Let's select this guy, go into his material. He has several materials here. So if we choose each one and make sure they're using node, I'm just going to go through each one of them. Select that gray ball again, 
go over here and look at Unreal. We'll close this guy. We don't want to save it. Select him. The gray ball's right there, so we can double click that material. That 0.5 is not plugged into anything, so we don't have to worry about that. But what we do have is a 0.18 in base color, and then we have a full roughness, so it's fully rough. Let's go back, swap this guy out to the principled shader. In fact, we'll just do that for each one of them right now. Back up to the gray ball. So we know this was a 0.18. So if we add an input RGB, plug it in, change the color to 0.18 all the way down. Get the same color. We know the roughness was a 1, so we'll turn that all the way up. So we now have that gray ball. Double check it. Should be correct. Not going to save. I'm actually going to open up all of these materials so I don't have to put up with the opening and closing of each one. So I'm going to double click this chrome ball. I'm going to pull this down for a moment. And then I'm going to double click each one. And you'll notice that it opens them up in tabs. So we'll be able to get to them really easily. We'll maximize this window again. Go back to our Chrome ball. And then we'll have to remember these settings. One, which is full white, it's the base color, full metallic, and then a tiny bit of roughness, 0.1. Let's go back into Blender, select the Chrome ball. And I'm just realizing you don't really have to input a color. You can just click on it right here. So let's click on that guy. Make it one all the way across RGB. So it's pure white. That's going to make things a lot faster, right? Metallic is one. And then roughness is 0.1. So we get a chrome ball. Move on to clear coat black. Let's look at what clear coat black looks like in Unreal Engine. And it simply zeroes out color, which is pure black, and then zeroes out roughness. So let's do the same. Color, you just grab this bar, go all the way down till all three are zero and then make sure roughness is zero. Let's move on to the next one, which is the color grid. Color grid. So we have an image map plugged into this one. We will have to create that. And then we'll have to remember 0.2 and 0.95 for specular and roughness. Jump back into Blender. I'm going to go ahead and do the specular at 0.2, roughness at 0.95, and let's, let's put in this color image. I'm just going to find it here in my documents. It was Unreal Projects and My Project. We made this work file. So that image is the color checker.hdr. I'm going to drag that in and then plug it in. And there it is. So we got one more, which is the clear coat. This one's a little more challenging. But if we look at it here, we'll notice that this is a different shading model, a clear coat. So it opens up a little bit different settings. But we're going to match this as best we can. The base color of 0.18 and a metallic of 1. 
roughness of 0.65. So let's do that now. So this was 0.18. Metallic was 0.65. And I already forgot what the roughness was. Actually, the roughness was 0.65. Metallic was 1. So let's do that. Metallic was 1. Roughness was 0.65. Here's where we get a little bit of difference. Uh, so it's making its clear coat completely rough. We can do that, but its clear coat is going to look a little bit different from ours in, in Blender. Uh, hopefully this will be fixed in Eevee, but if we zoom up here, we can just kind of get a visual. First, we're going to kind of turn clear coat on. Uh, this is its roughness, so we're going to turn that all the way down. So it's not quite as Fresnel looking as the one in Unreal. Now we can play with the metallic roughness, and the weird thing is we can actually over crank this clear coat. I'm going to set it to four. And I think that pretty much does it. That's about as close as we can get, just over cranking the clear coat there. Now the only thing missing is we don't have a sunlight, which is in this scene. It's in this scene and it's under the light stage. So when you look at this blueprint light stage, you'll see that there's a sun being used at a brightness of 2.75. So if we go back into Blender, hit Shift A, and add us a lamp that is a sun. Let's jump out of this mode real quick so we can see where that is. I'm gonna hit three to get to the side view. G to move it. I'm going to rotate it back, trying to match what I'm seeing in Unreal. So in Unreal, we see the chrome ball is up front, the shadow. It's about the distance of the cube in the back. So let's see what we get. Shift Z again to go into the rendered view. And might want to rotate it back just a little bit more. Somewhere around there. So we have this really soft shadow that we can fix just by reducing the size of that sunlight. And then the strength, of course, we can match them at 2.75. So this is a scene that pretty closely resembles what we have in Unreal using the Unreal Engine's HDR image and the materials and meshes from Unreal. Again, our clear coat is probably the furthest thing from a match, but color-wise, contrast-wise, this is really close. This is something that you can easily work with. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been informative. Let us know if you want to see more about Unreal Engine and Blender.